the mic on. Oh, 20 minutes before the hour. Joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, my guest is Michael D'Antonio. He's the author of The Truth About Trump and more than a dozen other books, currently an on-air contributor for CNN, specializing in national politics. He also writes for CNN.com, The Boston Globe, and The L.A. Times. He was previously a reporter for Newsday, where he shared a Pulitzer Prize for local reporting. Um, his latest book we're going to talk about, The Shadow President, The Truth About Mike Pence. Michael, good morning to you, man. Good morning. You know, um, a lot of people, you know, who even agree with me that there needs to be impeachment, they're concerned about Pence. They say he could be worse. But whenever that conversation comes up, um, now I can share your book. Here to four, I can just make one statement and, uh, and, and disabuse him of the concern. When people ever ask me about Mike, Mike Pence or Mark, shouldn't we be worried about him? I just encourage them to Google the search engine which Trump has maligned so recently. Just Google Mike Pence's daughter casts no reflection in the mirror. <laughs> and that usually takes that usually takes care of it for me, Michael. You know, your book might help too, but that usually takes care of it. I usually win people over with that one. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> have, have you seen that? <laughs> no, I haven't, although, you know, it'll be the first thing I do when we finish our interview. Oh, my God, man, you got to see it. It's, they went a restaurant, and it's a, it's, it's, I guess it's an optical illusion, but it went viral a couple of years ago. They're sitting in front of a mirror at a at a at a booth in a restaurant, and the poor child's reflection isn't in the mirror. And and you know it's been all kinds of you know studies and deep dives. Check it out though; it's it's a lot of fun. But well, maybe that maybe that part of her was frightened. <laughs> well, be that as it may, uh, and I know Indianans. You know, it was interesting, Michael. Indianans I know were relieved when Trump put him on a ticket because they wanted him out of Indiana that badly. No, you're right. And and actually, Indiana is one place where the book is getting a very good reception because we spent a lot of time there. We talked to a lot of folks. They considered him a disaster as a governor. And here's a state that where the registration's a Republican majority by a substantial number. And he was hanging on by his fingernails. So if he had had a a strong challenger, I don't think he would have won a second term. And that's hard to do in Indiana. They they tend to reelect their Republican governors over and over again. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I actually got the impress impression, Michael, that he feared losing, didn't really want to run, and that's why he wanted to be on the ticket. As a matter of fact, if I remember correctly, there was some 11th hour negotiating. They were thinking about dumping Pence. And he got put back on. But it, I remember it went down to the wire because the day that Trump announced him, he had until noon to decide whether he was going to stay in the governor's race, if I remember correctly. No, you're right. And, you know, one of the funny things is I was on uh, New Day, CNN's early morning program that day, and they were just uh, tossing around the idea of who Trump might pick and uh Chris Cuomo asked me, and for some reason, the name Mike Pence came strong in my mind. Mm -hmm. And I think looking back on it, there was something obvious about the balance that he brought to Trump. You know, the, the, his singular identity as a politician is uh, his version of Christianity, his idea of what piety looks like. And it, it, he, he's almost the polar opposite in the way that he behaves uh, to Donald Trump. And it was a very crude calculation they made. And actually, Paul Manafort is the one who made the calculation that this was the thing to do. And he even pulled off a little trick to keep Trump in town in Indianapolis so that he would spend more time with Mike. Wow, wow. So, Michael D'Antonio, with his folks, a shadow president, quick calls, quarter before the hour his latest book, The Truth About Mike, Mike Pence. I've also suggested to people that I'm not certain Pence is free and clear from the Russia investigation himself. Is he caught up in it in any kind of way? Oh, I think he is. He was in on a lot of the meetings uh, discussing 
the assessment made by the intelligence agencies uh, when Clapper went to Trump Tower and sat down with everybody and discussed everything, including Mike Flynn, Pence was present. I, his claim that he was the injured party, that uh, Flynn had lied to him. Yeah, that, right. That was the excuse that was made to get rid of Flynn at the start of the administration. We don't think that's true at all. We, we think that uh, Pence knew exactly what was going on. But he has a knack for keeping himself out of range of wherever the mud is flying. He He's very good at, at keeping his image clean even when the worst things are going on around him. Um, you argue that he literally is behaving as a shadow president, Michael D'Antonio. He is uh, uh, sowing his own seeds. Oh, for sure. So as, as a part of the administration, he's more engaged in domestic policy, I think, than any vice president in modern times. And this was intentional. Uh, when Don Jr. talked about the vice presidential choice, he announced that whoever was chosen would be the most powerful vice president in history. Mm. Um, this was at when Kasich of Ohio was being considered. And Mike, when he got to Washington, took over the transition from uh, Chris Christie. You know, Christie had had this trouble with the Kushner family where he put Jared's dad in jail when he was a prosecutor. So when they won and Christie was in charge of the uh, transition, it was clear he was going to be squeezed out, and Pence took his spot. And from that moment on, he started populating the entire administration with his people. So you've got Betsy DeVos, who was a big Pence donor going back to the 90s, Scott Pruitt, Alex Azar, uh, Ben Carson, Coates. It, the list of people who are Pence people and not Trump people in this administration is as long as your arm. Do you really think that there is some anticipation beyond Mike Pence's own imagination? that he could, before 2020 rolls around, assume the Oval Office? Do you think that's crossing his mind? Is that is he measuring the drapes? He's only doing that every day. Mm. It, mm. Might be, it might be every hour. Wow. You know, this, is, this is a fellow who decided in high school that he was going to be president. By the time he got to college, he was telling his uh fellow students that God intended for him to be president. Mm -hmm. And every step of the way since, he's been preparing for it. And the people around him say, when the moment comes, Mike will be ready. And I, I kind of wonder if he saw in Trump such a chaotic and disruptive person yeah. Yeah. that he, he knew, well, my odds are going to be awfully good. Uh, I'll take this job because... I may step into the Oval Office sooner rather than later. Yeah. I, you know, it's interesting. Uh, I thought about that, too, early on. I don't like to give Mike Pence too much credit for having forethought. But I wondered, I mean, because if you're that kind of person, if you think that kind of way anyway, you'd say, hey, well, let me take this job because this dude may not last very long. Uh, the book, The Shadow President, The Truth About Mike Pence. But but because I don't give him a lot of credit, Michael, I, I, Am I wrong about that? He, I, I know how sinister he is. I know how far right wing he is. But there, there always seems to me to be something missing. The elevator not going to the top, even when he's around Trump. This just the, 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 the fawning air around him. It, it he, he seems, um, uh, a, a little dense to me. Or, or am I, am I misreading that? Well, I think he's disinterested in most of policy. So I think what you're picking up on is real, but where he is focused and where he does have some real intelligence is playing politics, getting elected, uh, most of all going around the country, uh, getting people riled up with this Christian right message yeah. of, you know, we're going to reverse Roe v. Wade, we're going to take away marriage equality. The issue of uh, gay rights is incredibly important to this crowd. And 
then it's things like, well, I don't believe that evolution is real, and I, <laughs> I don't believe that climate change is occurring. He he once wrote a column that he published in Indiana that said there's no link between cigarette smoking and cancer. So wow. this he's willing to say some pretty crazy things that align with an ideology and get this electoral base fired up, and that's what he brought to Trump. To Trump. You know, 80% of evangelical Christians voted for Trump, and they did it because of Mike Pence. So even if he's measuring the draperies, even if he succeeds, uh, 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 succeeds Trump in the Oval Office if Trump is ousted, for that very reason you just stated, the evangelical Christian right connection, I don't see how he survives a, a, a general election contest when his own contradiction and hypocrisy, Michael D'Antonio, will be called out. Here he is, Mr. Evangelical, backing a man with multiple allegations of sexual affairs, sexual assault, paying off women, maybe even paying one woman to have an abortion who he impregnated. How does Mike Pence defend standing next to Donald Trump like that? Well, that's a, that is really a key issue. You put your finger on something vital. What's strange is I think Trump gets away with being Trump but because people think he's not a hypocrite. You know, they'll say, well, look at him. He's a lout. We all know he's terrible. He's just being terrible, and he's the terrible person we chose. But for others, like Mike, who radiates this uh, spiritual superiority and uh, this piety – to stand next to Trump, I think, can be very damaging. You're, you're absolutely right. It's, you know, he didn't call him out on Roy Moore. He didn't right, call, right, he didn't call right. him out on the Muslim ban when Mike had, a year before, said that any ban on Muslims entering the country would be unconstitutional. You know, Pence doesn't believe in separating children at the border from their parents and putting them in in prison cells, but he stands by and, and gives that smile. Right. Or, or, you know, there was that famous event at the White House where Trump went around the cabinet table and everybody praised him effusively, but Mike Pence outdid everyone. You know, he spoke for three minutes and every 12 seconds there was a word of praise for Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. it just was an appalling display of toadyism. Um, and <laughs> I could see that vi that video being played in uh, campaign commercials and absolutely ruining Pence. Yeah, I, I would agree. I, I think he's problematic. And so that's why, you know, I've, I've said it best to me, he's Gerald Ford. Um, uh, and again, maybe I'm being naive. I'm hoping that's what, that's all he ends up being if he's not indicted himself. Well, right. I, I, Pray that he's Gerald Ford. Yeah. You know, Ford had at least a sense of decency, and a he he heard the call to stabilize the country. And I think you're right that were he ushered into the Oval Office a year and a half early or a year early, he'd have a heck of a time getting elected himself. But you know, one of the chilling things to think about is because of the way the Constitution works. If Pence succeeds Trump next year mm -hmm. and manages to get elected and reelected, he would be the longest serving president since FDR. <laughs> <laughs> so that so we are everybody's clear. We cannot allow that to happen under any circumstances. Everybody, wake up now. Yeah, uh, I think that's true. Everybody needs to wake up and uh, and and get on at eight six six nine nine series. Let's talk to AJ in Houston. AJ, God bless you. Good morning. Get woke and vote. Get ready for impeachment. You're on the air with Michael D'Antonio, the co-author, I should say, along with Pete Eisner, um, the shadow president, the truth about Mike Pence. Go right ahead, AJ, quickly, please. Good morning. Yes, I heard you talking about Googling Mike Pence, and as long as we're Googling him, uh -huh. everyone needs to Google Mike Pence, chief of staff, and look at the photos. Because as a gay man, those photos are ringing my gaydar off the charts. I mean loudly off the charts. Well, you know, you're not the first person to say that. You know, this is 
the Mike's fixation on uh, the gay community on uh, rolling back equality in marriage on he actually supported and signed a bill that permitted discrimination against gay people right. by businesses in Indiana. He had to step back from that and, and amend it so it wasn't so uh, pointed and, and discriminatory. Uh, you know, there's an element of him protesting too much. and it, Yes, exactly. Yeah, and, and that's suspicious. AJ, got to run. I'm out of time. Uh, the Shadow President, Truth by Mike Pence, Michael D'Antonio, the author, so, Mike, I know you're going to go Google what I mentioned to you. So let me know what you, <laughs> let me know what you think, man. Great book, though. And let's talk again, because I know this is going to be a developing story, and we're going to call on you uh, more for your analysis on everything as it develops, okay? Thanks. Uh, have a great day. All right, you do so, Michael. Pleasure to meet you. We'll take Bye. a break on the radio. Series 6 in progress, 127. Risen's Radio, Frank, Tom, Mike, and Charles on hold. Don't go away. We'll come get to you right after these commercial messages. This is MIP. Those of you watching on our stream, hang out for a minute. Why don't you? And then we'll take some calls. We're, gonna, we're talking about DeSantis, or who I like to call DeSatan, and his despicable monkey reference. Frank is in North Carolina. He's on hold. He believes that DeSantis' comment was innocent. So in a few minutes, we'll talk to him on the radio. We'll see if he has the courage to stay on hold. But this cannot be tolerated. As, and as I've been saying, um, we need to call for DeSantis to withdraw, okay, from the race, period. Uh, so stay tuned. Don't go away, everybody. Um, this is kind of behind the scenes. We're in a commercial break. There's some news uh, and what have you. And then um, we'll come right back. Can we hear the news? Bring the news up so everybody can hear the news while we're on this long break. It's not going to go through. No news yet. Oh, it's no. That's right. It's, it's still ads. It's ads. Commercial. Yeah. What's this ad for? No, Protect your family with AIG Direct. Yeah. Oh, that reminds me. I'll get your live reads more behind the scenes. Th those of you who are on our streams, uh, feel free to share your comments, reply on Facebook, Twitter, comment on YouTube. Those of you on Instagram, feel free to make a comment. I see a couple of you are already. Good morning, uh, everyone. Um, and uh, let us know what you think about DeSantis. If you heard, if you heard the conversation, um, uh. <laughs> If you heard the conversation about Mike Pence, what do you think about that? Have you all, have you, you all Googled that? Google Mike Pence's daughter casts no reflection in the mirror. It's interesting. You haven't, you haven't looked at that? No, but when you Google it, it's so messed up. Well, I, I, I don't care. Um, when you Google it, the first thing that comes up, at least for me, the Snopes headline is Mike Pence's vampire daughter. Yeah. Yeah, because you know we know why they call it that. Well, yeah, but that's because hilarious. Because vampires cast no reflection in the mirror. Poor thing. But really, you go look, and you can't. And when you first look at, you be like, "Nah, this is just." Sin. But then when you study it, you say, "How is this child not in the picture?" Google that, y'all. Why, why we sitting here waiting? Um, we'll get to Frank, Tom, and Charles next. What I, what else do I need to do? Oh, let me look up something. I, um, Khalif. Uh, Akeem Brown is going to join us momentarily. That is um, Khalif's brother. He'll be joining us talking about uh, criminal justice reform. Uh, there we go. You got live? We're we going to do, we're going to get some live reads. We only have one. Okay. Great news out of Florida, wasn't it? I will be, ladies and gentlemen, uh, appearing on MSNBC at 9 a.m. Eastern. Um... 
<laughs> what? It's so bright. Okay. The sun rises so early. Talk about vampires. Andrew thinks it's bright, y'all. Okay, what does it say? Got it. <laughs> 9 a.m. on MSNBC. And then uh, flying to Detroit for Aretha Franklin's home going. Uh, we'll be at the concert tonight. And then tomorrow at the funeral service. So I'll be reporting back to all of you about that. Good morning, Aunt Teresa. How are you this morning? My Aunt Teresa's up early looking at us on uh, um, Instagram. She loves her nephew. Ain't that right? <laughs> Uh. All righty then. Oh. Is that Andrew? Who said that? It's it's the March. Oh, that is me. I'm <laughs> monitoring. I keep you know I keep telling Andrew you got to change his handle to in uh, the marsh, like Jack Nicholson. In the marsh. I still haven't <laughs> seen that movie. <laughs> I know we have one Bostonian, Sister Yvette, is watching, so she can relate to that. Uh, Sister Yvette in Boston. We, so, yeah, she changed to In the Mosh. I gave you know, you said that. I like this. I like the band The Mighty Mighty Bostones, and it just took me, like, 25 years of my life to realize that, because they're from Boston, that their name is a play on, like, either, Boston. Either In the, in the Mosh or... Iron Fist, you gotta pick one. I think I prefer the immortal Iron Fist defender of Kunlun. Uh, what what's the other? Oh, Danny Rand, the immortal Iron Fist def- protector of Kunlun, enemy of the hand. That's what it is. Enemy of the hand. Everybody who knows anybody in Florida. Hey Tracy Latrell. Everybody who knows anybody in Florida. Should call your those Floridians family friends and tell them to get ready to vote for Andrew Gillum. Everybody also ought to be demanding that DeSantis. Oh, my uncle lives in Florida. Sorry, thank you. I forgot that that DeSantis or DeSatan would draw from the race. Period. Period. So yeah, it's just totally unacceptable. Eight six six ninety nine serious. Eight six six nine nine seven four seven four. We'll probably take Charles first in Florida. Like I said, Khalif Browder is going to be here, brother. I'm sorry, Keen Browder, but I keep saying Khalif, brother of Khalif Browder. So stay tuned for that. We have a full show, really, really big show. Yeah. We, yeah. Please do check out the book, though, y'all. <clears throat> the Shadow President, The Truth About Mike Pence. The Shadow President, The Truth About Mike Pence. Check it out. Everybody can see. This is what we do on the break, a little time. Those of you on our streams, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, make it plain. Twitter, minister with two Ts. You can't hear the music because we don't play it through the streams. Otherwise, it'll get taken down. But we've been playing nothing but the Aretha Franklin soundtrack. Open um, up Freeway of Love on Spotify and yeah, play it in the background. And then you can imagine. On the Freeway of Love. That's what we're playing right now. Um, I'll be headed to Motown a little later this afternoon for the concert and then the funeral on tomorrow for the Queen of Soul. 
Be on MSNBC at 9 a.m. Eastern. Be sure to join me there. People still want to talk about the Satan in Florida. We want to continue to have that discussion. God bless you. Good morning. Good woke and vote. Get ready for impeachment. Charles is in Florida. Let's go, Charles, first. Charles, hey, man, what's happening? Hey, how you doing, Mark? Um, I, I mean, I'm I'm very excited about this race. Yeah. And, uh, just, I, I hear the enthusiasm is through the roof down there. It is because um, on on um, the primary day, primary night, he was second. And, I mean, he was third from what I was seeing on MSNBC. And when I saw him move up to second, I was like, oh, we got a chance. So, you know, it was really exciting at the end that he that he came through. But um, this thing about the census, you know, seriously. You know, I predicted it because in a four or five way race, you only need 30 percent. It's not a runoff down there. Right, right. Exactly. And remember, he was on that. He was on last week, right? When I heard him. Yeah. He, well, he was on Monday and Tuesday. OK. This week well, he was on election primary primary election eve and he was on primary day right here. No, I was at work, but I think I did pick up something last at work when you had him on it. You're not yeah. supposed to be at work when Make It Plain is on. <laughs> Can't help you, man. But um, but Mr. DeSantis, um, I mean that's the best way I could, you know, best words I have for him. Uh, this is nothing but racism. You know what I'm saying? This is the racist call. This is the dog whistle, or whatever you want to call it. And I think what really gets at me, or what really pisses me off, is. It's either they feel like they are so entitled that they can tell you that, no, we are not racist. Or is that, you know, is this some type of mind game they're trying to play? Like, you know, you stupid enough that we'll tell you that we're not being racist and you'll, you'll be so gullible. You'll, you'll just fall for anything, you know? And I'm just sick of it. It's either one or the other. Either they think that we're too stupid to pick up on it or they just feel so entitled that, you know, you can't call them a racist when they when they practice it day in and day out. Yeah. So I don't know if um I really want him out of the race. What I would like for us to do is to come together and come out in masses and just stump this down, you know. Well we need to do it's a both and and rather than either or. we need to demand he withdraw. He needs to withdraw. If he withdraws, don't matter because they can't put another candidate on the ballot. We need to demand he withdraw it and let it be known that that type of racism will not be acceptable. He has disqualified himself, the Satan has, from this election. That's all there is to it. Well, hopefully, you know, if we went by a landslide, that would be, you know, enough proof that, you know, we're, we're not putting up with this anymore in Florida. Um, what I am concerned about, one last thing. Is if, if Roseanne Barr had to quit and be fired, he needs to withdraw. He's saying the same thing. You cannot compare black people to apes and monkeys, period. If you any of you did that on your job, you'd be out of there. But you're right, Charles. We got to get out and vote. People need to get mobilized and vote. We got to win. Get woke and vote. Charles, good to talk to you. Uh, take care now. Frank's in uh, North Carolina. Frank, God bless you. Good morning. Get woke and vote. Get ready for impeachment. Go right ahead. Yeah, DeSanto's comment uh, using the word monkeys was a metaphor for messing around he was cautioning the Florida voters not to tamper. Yeah, well, you, of course, of course, you're going to excuse around. it because you're a racist like he is. That was not a metaphor. Nobody's okay. ever used that phrase before. People Googled it all day yesterday. No one has ever heard of monkey this up. Oh, you know, what about watermelon and chicken and nappy? How much lower the list? You guys hijack all these words in the English language and say they're off limits. No, those are your words, you racist pig. Those are your words that you use against us, you you racist piece of garbage. That's all you. Where do you work? Where do you work, devil? Where do you work, devil? Where do you work? I work, I work out of my house. You don't need oh, that's right. I keep work. forgetting. You work out of your house. You don't have a real job, so you're protected. Yeah. Let me tell you something. If you had a real job working with an employer, do you think you would come to work and call me a monkey and say, Mark's going to monkey this up and keep your job? He, he did not call Gullum a monkey. If you, were, if you had a real, if you weren't unemployed sitting in your underwear, if you had a real job with a real employer, could you say to a fellow employee, you're going to monkey this up and keep your job? That wasn't the context it was used. I asked you a question about that. Answer my question. It wasn't I'm not ta- I'm not talking about DeSantis right now. I'm asking you, Mr. Lack of Intelligence, if that were to happen, could you do that and keep your job? Oh, absolutely. I call it the context means everything. It's context. No, but so the context is he's talking in reference to an African American. You don't use monkey. No, ca- wait, 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 hold. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Frank. 
is Gillum an African American or not? Yes or no? It's irrelevant. Yes, he is, but it's irrelevant. I know, I know it's irrelevant because African Americans aren't human beings. We know we're irrelevant to you, oh but the fact God. of the matter is, is the person he's running against an African American or not? He is. He is okay, so he, that's context number one. That's context number one. We're, we're going to learn something today because we're going to get you out of your ignorance today. What network was he on? I have no idea what he was what Yes, you do. He was what on. television station was he on? Probably Fox. That's right. So that's context clue number two. Oh, my and all God. Pe- oh, oh, all please. people do on Fox is race bait. Oh, uh, that's all they do. Hey, do you remember what's his name? Uh, I'm in the morning with nappy headed hoes. Remember that? And you supported that. You thought that was there appropriate. Were white girls, there were white girls on the court when he said it. No, there were not. No, there were yeah, not there any were. white girls. Go there was a at, black team. No, there were not, Frank. There were white girls on the court. Frank, do you know? Do you know a black person? I know plenty of them. No, you don't. You, do, do you? Who, who? Give me an idea. What black person do you know? I got friends. I have friends at work that are black. No, you don't. And they don't wear it on wait, their wait, sleeve. Wait, 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 wait. I thought you just sleeve. said you work from home. Wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. You just said you work from home. What? I don't understand. I do. I do work from home, and I go to meetings and see them at meetings. What kind of business are you in? I'm self-employed. So who are these? Co- how do you? If you're self-employed, how do you have black coworkers? We got distributors. We got the stir- You don't even know what the hell I do. It has nothing. That's to do why with I asked you, about. you truly ignorant fool. I ask again. What do you do? What kind of work are you? And I ask you, stupid man. Tell I'm me. I know sales. I don't know. I'm in sales. I'm in sales. What oh, sell, selling sales? what? What are you selling? I sell. Pro- I'm not going to get into it with you because you don't have a job. You don't do anything. <laughs> And, and, even, and even if you do, you might have one, but you don't want me to know because, you know, I'll send this recording to your employer and you'll be an, an unemployed, out of work fool. And then your wife will leave you. The context he used, the word monkey was appropriate. There was nothing wrong with the word. Rational people think like that. You don't. So no. So I'm not. Nobody thinks that that word was appropriate. So I guess everybody's irrational to you. No, rational people believe Hey, Tom's that in Georgia. Tom, you want to talk to this racist Frank? Take him. Yes. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Right. Get rid of him. Take him out. All right. I'm, I'm, of a, I'm of a different mind. I think you keep the Santas in there and you have, he gets hammered wherever he goes. And that's the only thing that he, he talks about. He's got to own that. If he wants to be a racist piece of crap, he's got to own it. And that's a, that'll be the only thing that they talk about in that campaign. And... Where did that shit in your pants racism calling even put putting monkey in a black person in the same sentence is racism. Plain and simple. Oh, that's baloney. Baloney. Frank, hey, Frank, Trump is back you, live, Frank you live with your mommy, Frank. Frank, you live with your mommy. And, and you live with your mom. <laughs> Bye, Frank. Everything Trump everything Trump touches goes to gold and DeSantos will win and then you'll have eight six six ninety nine series, eight six six nine nine seven four seven four eight. Uh, 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 Mike's in uh, Florida. Mike, God bless you. Good morning. Get woke and vote. Get ready for impeachment. Go right ahead. Oh man, I love it when you get worked up with idiots that call in. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, he's calling. He's calling from the basement. But I'll tell you yeah, what. Yeah, he is. It is it, listen, it isn't even. It isn't even the word monkey, which of course was planned. This guy's not an idiot. He's a. He's a Trump supporter. He's a, anybody who supports Trump that much drinks the Kool Aid of racism. And this guy, Frank, does, too. He wants to talk about golden touch of Trump. Let me tell you something. Um, he, he didn't just say monkey. He used words like articulate. That's a wonderful little dog whistle that uh, people are, are, are mentioning, but not enough. That's just like saying, you know, look at this black person. He, he can actually, I can understand him. That's been going on for decades. So let's, let's leave that guy out of the conversation. I just want to talk about something positive. Because Andrew will win in Florida. Yeah. And, and he's running against the perfect candidate for us. Because if we can't beat a DeSantis in Florida, we have a bigger problem than even Trump. Uh, and by the way, I want to mention something. Um, I think he won because he got the bump from you. He was on the radio right before he, he won. Isn't that right? Uh, yeah, he was on the radio Monday and Tuesday, Election Eve well, and Election Day. I want to give you a heads up because, you know, they're going to be beating down your door since you're the kingmaker now. Yeah. You're going to be getting Bernie Sanders. You'll be picking the 2020 
you know, Democratic president. So, you know, that's a lot to deal with on your shoulders. So keep up the good work. And just to mention real quick, in Florida, it's not just Andrew we need to support. Every Democrat. Sean, Bill Nelson, Sean Shaw, the Attorney General, Bill Nelson. Rick Scott can't be in the Senate, y'all. Well, that's right. But there's one other person I want you to remember down here in South Florida, and that's Lauren Bear is running against Brian Mast. Brian Mast is another Trump sycophant. We need to support Lauren Bear for that congressional seat. And that's just a, uh, in my in my district, but it's a major vote, just as important as the governorship, I believe. So I appreciate it, Mark. Thanks for letting me All right, me man. Up. Thank you. Enjoy your day. Eight six six ninety nine Sirius. Mike's in Maryland. Mike, God bless you. Good morning. Get welcome. Vote. Get ready for impeachment. Go right ahead. Hey, Mark. What's up, man? What's up? If he, if Frank was standing next to a coworker, okay, a black guy, and he said. Hey, 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 Mike, don't monkey this up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He wouldn't have any teeth. <laughs> it would just be, I mean, it would don't be monkey automatically. This up. But, but time he, out. Did, he, you, did, you, did, you hear, did you hear him say he's working from home? Then he said he has black coworkers. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just, just you know. I dare him to go to his so-called black friends and say whatever their name is, you know, don't monkey. And that that phrase never existed until no. the Satan said ne- No, you never heard Nobody heard that don't monkey this ain't up. nobody ever. They never heard that. And this is, this is incredible. But I called about the dude yesterday, black Republican. Okay? Um, yeah. Yeah, you all they they always seem to forget John Boehner and McConnell. <laughs> Just no, no, no to Obama, President Obama the whole time. I right, mean, right. President tried to compromise over and over and come to him, and it was never. And they always forget that. And then the brother was talking about uh, uh, the guy from front. Senator Byrd, okay, if, Mark, if you look up at how they voted on the Voting Rights Act and the Civil Rights Act, okay, the Northern Republicans and Democrats voted, and the West voted for the Voting Rights and the Civil Rights. You can pull it up. And then they had all Democrats except for one, I think it was one Republican in the South. And even that Republican voted against the vote, Voting Rights and the uh, Civil Rights Act. So, you know, to, to always be saying that, and then you know the, the, the Democrats were, were had the color red back then, and the Republicans were blue. And then when when the, the switch happened during Southern, what's it called, the, the uh, what did Nixon do the Southern strategy. Right, Southern strategy. Okay? Right, right, right. Uh, because the the Democrats were so pissed off at LBJ that they left, had nowhere to go, and then Nixon and Buchanan came up with the Southern strategy to welcome th- those disgruntled Democrats into the party. And the party, the, that's when the color changed. So the so the South has been red forever, from Democrats and then the change to Republicans. It's just, it's been red the whole time, you know. So how do you how do you move one, you know, where you had all these Southern Dixiecrats and Democrats down there voting for only white people, and then all of a sudden now those same Southerners. And Repub- Republicans down there, whatever, are only voting for white people. They're the same people. Yeah. They just jump ship. Yeah. You're right, man. Ship. You're right. You're right. Thank you, man. Got to roll. Let me try to get some other people, okay? Okay. Good to talk right. to you. Ladies first. Dana's in Maryland. Dana, God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Get ready for impeachment. Great ahead. Good morning, beautiful. And God help me. <laughs> I mean, God help me. I, I, we're getting fresh baked help. And I haven't had my coffee, barely. Um, So the new article just came out a few minutes ago. Uh, He's now saying that Jeff Sessions 
talks like he has marbles in his mouth. He hates his southern drawl. He prefers Ivy League pedigree. This is Donald Trump. This is just 10 minutes ago from Politico, if you want to look it up. Okay. So now he's trashing his education, trashing the sound of his voice, trashing the way he talks, you know, which I don't care. I think the man is a ghoul. But when you list the criminal conduct going on, Mark, and I mean it, the list must be, what, 50 that I could name off the top of my head. Mm. And Mitch McConnell doesn't give a fuck about anybody. And everybody is afraid of him. Do you think he's afraid of Donald Trump? Honestly, do you think Mitch McConnell is afraid of Donald Trump? I think he might be afraid of Vladimir Putin, Trump's uh, Okay, maybe, maybe. But, you know, look at the way he walks around. He's running the show. And they just fast-tracked all those judges, and then they try to give us some reason why, which is horseshit. Oh, well, they were Democrat, you know, uh, people were supporting them anyway. I mean, they keep giving these people what they want, and then they wonder why people say we're going to back down. And one last thing, I saw Blumenthal, Chuck Blumenthal, on a show the night that they announced that they were going to pick Kavanaugh. Here was his exact words. We're going to break out every tool in the tool shed, every law in the book. They've done none of that. And Mitch McConnell held back everything Obama wanted to do from judges to soup to nuts for eight years. And we don't have the chones to do it back. Why not? I mean, what am I missing, Mark? Am I missing something? You know, we're still talking about her emails yeah. from China now. This is insanity. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I called Schumer's office the last three days. The message box is full. So, I mean, suffice to say, they're not listening to us. You know, they continue to have the Steve Cortezes, the Lewandowskis, the Santorums on television. Why? Why? You know, why? I don't. I just don't understand it. He's bashing CNN this morning, too, who continually has his ilk on. Do you notice that? Yeah. They're always on. And they sit there. Because it he, sells he and it's call. controversial and people like to see it. Right. And it's greed and ratings. But I, I'm really starting to feel hopeless. I am. I, I And you know me. I call. I march. You know, I go down to the annex at night a couple of times a week, and then they fast-track 15 judges? Why? And don't give me the reason that, you know, the reason they're giving? Uh Uh-uh. What's the real reason? We got nothing in return for that. Is, Is there something I'm missing? Do you know anything that I don't? No, nothing. So does this sicken you in a way? Of course it does. All of it does. Okay. All of it does. You know it does. You know it does. Okay, so I need a little Marka cuddle, you know, to get me through the day. Like, (laughs) what do you want me to do? Instead of give up, because I'm ready to give up. We go vote. We march. I knock on doors. What I I need you to do in Maryland is get everybody to vote for Ben Jealous for governor. That's how we do it. Well, I'm already doing that, but that's what I'm saying. But then they turn around and give them 15 more judges for an extra weekend to campaign? You maggots? I don't think so. Yeah. What are you doing for us? Right. Jack shit. We need young blood in there. The Gillums, the Harrisons, the, the Abrams. Right, Get right. these 70 year old archaic fossils out and get some fresh meat to handle that ghoul turtle. He's a ghoul, Mark. All right. Look, He's, I got I got to run there. Let me get some I other know. people. Good I love see. your show. All right. I thank you. So I'm not going to give up. Don't give up. Can't give up. Thank I you, won't. Dana. Bye. All right, Brinson, Ohio. Brent, God bless you. Good morning. Get woke and vote. Get ready for impeachment. Go right ahead. Hey, Mark. Um, I think it's a great segue from there. Uh, I obviously the comment was horrific in Florida. There, that's not even in question. But I do often wonder if we do ourselves any favors um, by bringing it out and calling it I, I think it gives them power um 
to to call this man a racist, even if it's true. I mean, just because something may be true doesn't necessarily make it intelligent to say. I know a lot of things that are true that I keep to myself, and I, you know. Well, what, what, I mean, why would it be not a good idea to call him? I mean, what, should we just be quiet about it? Well, I think that there's maybe a level that would be um, intelligent that would work, you know. But I think, and I'm talking about functionally, you know what I mean? That's what I'm. It doesn't seem. It seems to me like. So let's say you were to turn the radio right now to Breitbart or, uh, you know, go look at Fox or whatever. They, they're fueling their base. And we need to fuel ours. This, But ours, I, I'm not suggesting that we don't need to fuel ours, but does this really fuel ours? Is anybody Yeah, not, because, because, see, it, sometimes Democrats are too doggone quiet and we just lay down for stuff. We need to stand up and fight back on and all of these matters, just like Kavanaugh. Well, you know, we just got to go no along with it. There's nothing we can do. There's nothing. We, why not? Not with words. I mean, you can't fight this in the media. The way to fight this is win at the ballot. It's, you know what it's, I'm saying? But it's the a way, both, to, it's the a way both, to win is to vote but, in but, it, but, it's, but it's a both and. When you, when you uh, hold this guy accountable in the same media that he's in, then it mobilizes our base to get out and vote, too. I suspect our base is already pretty mobilized, don't you? Well, Brent, I mean, I mean look, but Brent, I'm, I'm, we I'm, I'm, have I'm, every but, but, reason but see, in the world. But to but vote Brent, right I, now. but I don't even think you, as a as a as a white Democrat, you're being insensitive. You want us to that be quiet. Be. You want you want us to be quiet in Florida, where Trayvon Martin was killed. No. Um, hold that, on. That, when that, you say I want you to be quiet, that's not that's. That, I mean, what do you say? I mean, what, indicating that I'm not suggesting that I desire. Look, I, I I don't necessarily understand all the emotions that go into it for other folks, and I don't pretend to. What I'm suggesting is it's important to win. But how okay? is this? You but so how win. is how is and dealing if, with this? How is calling the Satan? The racist dog he is going to cost us from winning. Okay, so suppose that uh, the center um, does does not agree that this was racist. They say, "Oh, this was an educated man. He made a slip of the tongue. He has no." They're no not they, those people. In anybody who, anybody who believes he's not racist is not in the center. Okay, that's just reality well, situation. Whatever that group. That's. Uh, I, you can call the group whatever, and I'll just agree and, with and, 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 and those you who feel There that, is and, a group of people and, and those who, feel who are that not that going to change their vote as a result of this, right? Right. Those are the people that are already with him okay. anyway. Okay. That's correct. But isn't there a group of people who likely would not come out to vote at this point, who will come out to vote now, Simply because we have called this person a racist, a racist person sitting at home and goes, you know, I really don't like that guy is now really going to come out because, hey, he's on my side. He's pissing off the black man. Right. He's pissing off the Mexican fellow, whatever the case is. We are giving them power. So Martin Luther King should have done what he did because that might have turned people off to join the racist side. That's your argument. That's your logic. No, no, no. That's a completely That's what you're different saying. scenario. And, and no, I'm not. No, but it is what it is. It it it, it is it is what it is. <laughs> I mean, well, everything to, is uh, what it is. A tree is a tree. And yeah, but but to, but 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 that, but to suggest, has no value but see, in any but see, but that, that Mark, but, but, of course, it is what it is. It's not. What no, it but ain't. it it does have value. See, you're diminishing what I'm saying now. You're not listening to what even you're saying. I'm saying it is what it is. Meaning, is racist. You call it what it is. That's the value of it. Don't tell me. Hold hold it, Brent. Don't tell me what I'm saying has no value. You don't get to say that to me. You don't get to say to me what I'm saying has no doggone value in this situation. uh, You need to listen to what you're saying. And you're being very doggone insensitive coming with this white liberal paternalism crap that we need to be quiet about it. We shouldn't say it. That's just going to mobilize them. That's insane, man. And it's insulting. And it's not happening anyway. Uh, All right. That's not going to happen. So it's really a non-conversation. People have responded to this. Happen, People are upset I'm not about sure it. What, 
you said it's not going to happen. What what exactly? People, pe- is not people being happen quiet. People people saying let's tiptoe oh, around this. Don't. Let's tiptoe because we might turn some other races on to vote for this guy. Ain't nobody tiptoeing tiptoeing through the two lips on this. It's too late for that. No, that's not happening. Please allow me. Uh, please allow me twenty seconds. Without coming at me, twenty seconds, please. Did you just wait a minute? Wait, wait a minute. Wait 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 wait. Coming at you. Yeah, yeah. Allow me, please, 20 seconds to explain what I'm trying to say. I understand. What, I, I, I think I I'll play play it back. I understand that you're angry, and I understand that you have emotion, and I'm not. I, and I'm totally respected. I have nothing against it. You are. Uh, I'm talking about the logic of winning. Okay? You're talking it's about making white of, folk feel comfortable. You're you're thing. you're doing that age old white liberal crap. Where we don't want to piss off the other. You want to make white folk feel comfortable, and you don't want strong black men like me turning off their vote. That's what you're saying. I know Mark, that. I've been doing this a long time. Not, Mark, please allow me 20 seconds to respond to that comment. Please. I am not. I have nothing against strong black people. This is going to be a black governor of Florida. I certainly hope, and I think he's very strong. And, and you just want to be quiet. You just don't want him. To, you just don't want him to acknowledge racism. No. No, no, no. That's what we're talking about. No, none of that. I didn't say that 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 that, that you can't acknowledge it. If you want to acknowledge it, acknowledge so it. So what is it's the problem the then, Brent? Level. What is and what, what has this whole conversation been about? What is the problem? The level. The level. What? So it's so what level. is the level? It is the level. How she, so you scripted. I, I, how should we respond to this? you allow me 20 seconds, please? I, no, no. Mark, let, let, me, let me tell you something, Brent. This is a radio please. show. I don't have time for you to ramble. You will go. I don't have time for you to ramble. What is the level? What do you want us to say? Say it. What do you think we should say? Perfect. I think you should respond exactly as the gentleman in Florida did. He said, I am not getting into that. That's that's his job because he's the candidate. That's appropriate for him as the candidate. That's what he should do. That's what candidates do. Correct. But others of us That's who aren't, I I, wait, shut up, shut up, do. Brent, shut up. Others of us who aren't candidates need to respond in the way we're responding. Well, that's your opinion. I was no, it's not my opinion. On. It's not my that, opinion. That is what is going it. on. That is what is going on. It's already happening. You said it ought happen. That's what I understand. But it's it already is happening. happening. The question is. I understand it is happening. I just acknowledged your point, Mark. It is happening. My question is, ought it be happening? Yeah, 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 no, no. My my question is, my question is in 2018, my question is in 2018, Mm -hmm. why are you still worried about trying not to offend certain white people? Why am I worried? Because you have to win. I believe in winning above anything else. I believe in so, winning. So, you, so, but see, then off, you'll make the you argument. You, you'll, you'll make the right. argument then. You'll make the argument that if he loses, you'll make the argument then if he loses, it'll be because we responded to uh, 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 forcefully to the racism of DeSantis. I will not make that argument. I will not make that argument if he loses. That is why. So, Brent, Brent, we just agree that he is responding in the way he should. So so I can go and move on, which is appropriate. How do you want the rest of us to respond, just to be quiet? I would like the rest of us to respond in the manner of our leader, exactly as he did. That's what I would like. I would like the rest of the group to behave the way the leader that we turn, chose turn, turn it. Okay, behaved. all right, all right. Well, that's not happening. I'm sorry. I understand it's not happening. I just think that it should. That's all I'm saying. It's I'm life and death. And I think, and I think, be angry. Do what you got to do. I understand. Yeah, but I, I just, but but but, I but I'm saying you're wrong. I'm saying you're wrong, and I am angry because what you're suggesting is ignorant and unrealistic. It really is. It's oh, just it's, that, it's that maybe so. I apologize. It, it is. Well, good. I accept your apology. Eight six six nine nine series. Uh, we'll be back. Serious X in progress. One twenty seven resistance radio. Get woke and vote. Get ready for impeachment. This is M I P.